tell a lot about someone by the way they're dressed. Here at Appalachian State, there are a few very distinct styles that our students wear. Each item of clothing gives us an insight into who that person is. Let's start from the bottom up. First off, we have the shoe most commonly worn in the summer, sandals. If students wear sandals, it tells us one of two things. Either they frequently walk in rivers and always have crap under their toenails, or they claim to be poor, but if they're wearing $100 sandals, I mean, come on. In the cooler months, especially when it snows, students typically wear some sort of boot. There are a few staples that are seen around Boone. The first is the Chelsea boot. A brand called Blundstones is a crowd pleaser, probably because it reminds students of their favorite item to ingest. Next are combat boots. This is the shoe of choice for girls with daddy issues, green hair, and a septum piercing. If you don't feel like talking about anime or hearing about their crystal collection, I don't recommend getting too close to these shoe wearers. Lastly, and this is a frat boy's favorite, we have duck boots. I affectionately call these the daddy's money all lives matter boots. Um, you'll typically find these shoe wearers with a Trump 2020 flag or a Saturdays are for the boys flag somewhere in their apartment. Now. On to pants. In the summer, the bottom half of students are typically covered by bathing suits or by just shorts, um, but when the weather gets a little colder, you'll see a lot of work pants, like dickies or dockers. I don't really know why, considering the only physical work our students ever do is walk up Bodenheimer, but oh well. Really any sort of work pant will do, you just gotta roll them up. Mom jeans have also made a comeback. The goal is to look like they're from the 1990s, but in reality, our students paid $75 for them from a store with a fast fashion model and benefits off of child labor. Shirts. For shirts, if you wear anything with the word southern on it, a whale, or something with a flag, um, how's your yacht doing? Has your dad found his third wife yet? A lot of students tend to thrift their tops. Thrifting has actually become an activity of sorts. This has led to the gentrification of goodwill. Goodwill for Christ's sakes! What will white middle class people ruin next? Honestly, there's not really a staple shirt for App State students, so let's just get into layering. Outerwear. Layering in the summer is a horrible idea, but it's really important in the winter. Sweaters are a big staple for students up here. Windbreakers, rain jackets, and winter coats are super important because the cold mountain wind and rain will penetrate Overall, you can tell many of our students have very distinct styles, which tell a lot about who they are as people. Stay tuned because we have a lot of exciting things up next. Hello, and welcome to Uplate App State. My name is Sam Spear, and I refuse to wear pants. And I'm Joe Basie, and I'm just happy he wore something. Joe, how about you stop playing around, and let's get into the headlines, okay? The people need their news. Let's get into it. For the first time in over a year, Nintendo broadcast one of their famous Nintendo Direct presentations. Millions of people around the globe knelt in front of their TV screens, clutched their amiibos, and prayed again to a god that doesn't listen. South Dakota Attorney General is facing charges for a fatal hit and run. We expect he will still win re-election though, as he is now the only resident of the state of South Dakota. After a historic vote, Virginia is now on the road to completely legalizing marijuana. In 2024, regulated stores will be able to sell cannabis. The university system is preparing for an influx of out-of-state transfer students. A brutal winter storm blew through Texas, leaving countless people freezing and without power. It was so cold, it drove all the rats out of Houston. According to Dr. Fauci, we might still have to wear masks into the year 2022. Now that Biden's president, I finally started listening to this Fauci guy and boy, he's kind of a downer. Two former App State students pled guilty for their role in a major drug ring which garnered $1.5 million. This does make them the highest earning App State alumni in university history. 
The arrest will not affect the naming of the new business school in their honor, following a sizable donation. The recent success of iCarly on Netflix reminds us all that many great main characters have a sidekick named Sam. Examples are Samwise from Lord of the Rings and Samwell from Game of Thrones. There's not a lot of sidekicks named Joe, so I guess we're a little unconventional here at Uplight. A Virginia prison staffer was fired on suspicion of smuggling after a body scan showed what she said was only a tampon. However, further reports confirmed that she did have contraband, but you really don't want to know where that was. The Virginia Department of Corrections defended their policies, saying, quote, it's standard security procedure to check these things periodically. The main cast of Spider-Man 3 has finally revealed the name of the upcoming film, or so they thought. Phone home, home slice, home wrecker. How about home owner and get a job, loser? Joe, you live in your mom's basement, okay? And what is your beef with Tom Holland? Hey, you just don't got that McGuire spunk. The new next-gen postal service vehicles will be hitting the road in 2023. I always knew my childhood drawings of cars were realistic. The giant who stepped on the front of the vehicle is still at large. NASA sent out a secret message on the parachute of their latest Mars rover. My guess is that it says send nudes and that they're really hoping for another black hole picture. Everyone's favorite robot duo Daft Punk is finally calling it quits. I don't know what's more surprising, the fact that they were together for 28 years or that they're French. One of them is heading off to try a solo career while the other one became the aforementioned Mars rover. A six-legged puppy named Skipper was recently born in Oklahoma City. In the Facebook announcement, Skipper has Monocephalus depigus and Monocephalus rachipigus debrachius tetrapus. Uh, it's your both just terms for six legs. Oh, he's just like a big fuzzy ant. Research shows that being in the top left corner of Zoom calls increases your credibility in other people's eyes. <laughs> Not on my screen, though. Every class, I click and drag everyone like they're in the Mii Plaza. The recent warm weather has driven a lot of App State students out to the Blue Ridge Parkway. I even saw one of them sacrificing one of their own so that the sun would never leave us again. And that's all the headlines we have this week. Oh no, your entire economy shut down. Not to mention you have nowhere to exercise, nothing to do for fun, and like one or two reliable friends. What do you do with yourself? Get in, loser. We're going racketeering. What is racketeering? It's only America's favorite new sport. It's so fun and easy to play that even you can do it, you cheap, broken number two pencil looking bloke. Let's start with the first and easiest part for you to understand the equipment. All you'll need for the game is at least one blunt household object, a racquetball, and an unsuspecting parking lot. A racquetball is a small, light, and super bouncy ball that is usually blue in color and specifically made for racketeering. It is solid enough to throw and hit with impressive velocity, but soft enough to not really do any damage to the surrounding cars. You can find them in most stores, and they're the only piece of equipment you'll need to purchase, so hopefully you can afford that much, you lazy, freeloading piece of spoiled lettuce. The next most important piece of equipment you'll need can be any solid object that you find in your home. This is what the hitter will use to hit the racquetball. Be creative. It can be as big as you want to maximize the hitting surface, or smaller and more aerodynamic. There's always a trade-off, so it's fun to try different things. This grooved cutting board has a good grip. Same with this pan, which is heavy but provides a great kick. This netted pizza pan reduces air resistance, while this machete is completely counterproductive, but looks awesome. You're also totally permitted to use real sports equipment, like a tennis racket or baseball bat, but prepare to be shunned as this violates the spirit of the game. The first ever racketeering game was played in the senior parking lot of Enloe High School with a tray from Taco Bell, which broke abruptly during the second ever racketeering game. Nobody knows how Jared got the tray, but it was suggested that he find a more durable object next time, like a tray from Chick-fil-A. Perhaps the biggest advantage of racketeering is its flexible location. You don't need a football field or a gym or anywhere remotely nice to play. Just find a quiet corner of any sizable parking lot and go nuts. Now that you're ready to play, listen carefully and this part shouldn't be too hard for your tiny skittle brain. 
First, you'll need to figure out who gets to hit first. I don't care how you do this. Each player will take turns being the hitter while the other players can be fielders. You can have as few as one and as many as 17 fielders at a time. Who cares? One of them will have to throw the pitch. This can be done by any fielder at any position and may be switched at any time, but it's up to the hitter using the blunt object to decide whether they want to swing. There are no balls in racketeering, something you might be able to relate to. In other words, there's no penalty for throwing a bad pitch, but no penalty for not swinging. So don't be a tryhard and cooperate a little, or nothing will ever happen. Once the pitcher throws a decent pitch, the hitter may decide to swing the blunt object and attempt to hit the racquetball. If the hitter swings and somehow fails to strike the ball, it's called, you guessed it, a strike. If the hitter somehow hits the ball backward, which would be even more ridiculous, that's also a strike. Remember, one strike and you're out. Three would be too many, I mean it's not that hard. Anyway, three outs and you're out of here until your next turn. So yeah, three outs and your turn ends, got it? Now let's talk about what happens when the hitter successfully hits the ball. The hitter will try to hit the ball out of reach of the fielders and make it do something cool. The fielders will attempt to catch it as quickly as possible. If they catch it directly from the air, that's a strike. I mean an out. Maybe the outs should just be called strikes? I don't care, you'll figure it out. It's also an out if they manage to secure the ball before it loses momentum or hits a surface other than the ground and changes direction. On the other hand, a hit that can't be recovered as such counts as one point for the hitter. Hit it far enough out of reach that it stops before a fielder can get to it? That's a point. Bounce it off a car? That's a point. Bounce it off a crappy looking Honda or Chevy? Two points. Bounce it into the bed of a pickup truck? Three points. The cooler it looks, the more points you get. Anything else I haven't mentioned that just feels deserving gets four. Hit it out of the parking lot, and you get five. It's your parking lot, so you can determine what's worth a reward. Don't ask me. So what's the point of racketeering? How do you win? Do you want to score the most points with the fewest number of turns? No. The goal is to extort money from the owner of the parking lot. For this, you'll have to be persistent. They can waste their time if they want to by calling the cops on your innocent game of racketeering, but you'll flee the scene and come back and play again. Jared's dad is a lawyer. They won't touch him. It's just easier for everyone involved if you slip us a 20 and maybe we find a different parking lot to play racketeering in. This is America's fastest growing sport. Do you think it was born yesterday? Its fans are growing by the thousands and they know whether or not you're willing to play ball. Now that you know how to play racketeering, enjoy. You'll never be bored again. Be sure to like and subscribe for more helpful how-to videos. All right, so uh, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to the camera. All right, I'm Evan Gardner. I'm a student at App, a senior, and a uh, member of the App State fencing team. How does it feel to take another human life? Uh, good. <laughs> Like what? What sort of good is it? Like, uh, is it like an accomplishment high? Like a, a sort like, of thrill? It's like cracking an egg. You know, okay. When you crack an egg perfectly and you don't get any of the, so it doesn't like, like get your rocks off or anything. Uh, well, no. I, yeah, I would say it was like that. That's okay. a better analogy, actually. Yeah. No, I'm glad to hear it. Um, now, what do you do if you discover your opponent has concealed a gun? I guess it would depend on um, like what kind of gun. Uh, how many points they have at that point. If you're leading enough in the points, you could just try to finish. If the points are equal, you could maybe try to make an appeal to the ref. I mean, if they were to just, you know, hit you in the head and, and kill you, then I think they would win by default. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you feel any solidarity with those popper fencers of yours? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, you can trace it right back, you know, and the the traditions and all of that is still alive. There's a lot of loot playing at our matches. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people wearing earth tones, that kind of thing. So the culture is still there. Yeah. I see. How do you approach fencing in different environments, such as pirate ships or uh, castle ruins? 
Yeah, so the castle ruins, you have to worry about the integrity. It's mostly about the surface of mm -hmm. what you're standing on. The castle ruins, there's the, it could shift, you know, and yeah. put you off balance. The stone is sometimes, you know, it's old and it hasn't held up over time. With the boats, it's mostly just about getting your sea legs. Um, and then there's the possibility that, you know, your opponent might be drunk, you know, on some sort of drum. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there's scurvy. Um, now, you have a girlfriend, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ellie. Yeah, yeah, Ellie. yeah. Now, what do you do when you're back into a corner and disarmed, only for your opponent to remove their mask, revealing themselves to be a very pretty man or woman, and sort of have you, you know, up against a, an obstacle, and they lean in for an intimate kiss? Yeah, me and Ellie have talked about this, and it's not cheating. Any sort of mortal combat is going to be inherently erotic. Mm -hmm. so. All right, one final question. Do you mm -hmm. think you could defeat me in combat? Uh, yeah. Really, I've been described as a mongoose, sort of agile and nubile. Oh well, I mean, I've never, I've never seen pictures of uh, mongoose, but I'm sitting right across from you, so I, I feel mm -hmm. like I could. Yeah. yeah. I also have the element of surprise. <laughs> What? What are you doing? I'm lying on the floor. Why are you lying while you're on the floor? Why don't you get up and lie to me like a man? Oh, uh, no, oh my god, no, no, not like that. Ugh. No, 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 not like that. What do you want? So there's this old lady, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, she's, she's blind as a bat, but she's carrying around these trunks full of old treasure from her dead husband's expeditions. And you know this how? Oh, uh, cousin of a friend of a friend. We did like a thing back in 17. So are you thinking like a stick up? Uh, no, no, it won't be very sticky. It'll be a pretty clean job overall. Not that kind of sticky meathead. Hey, just give me a piece of cake, man. You didn't tell me there was a caretaker. It'll be fine. Um, here's the plan. I'll get the caretaker. You take care of the old lady. Take care of the old lady, guy. I know those. Those are like those uh, Naruto hand signals. Oh, we got a weeaboo here. I'm deaf, you idiot. What are you guys doing here? Well, uh, you see, there's a uh, actually a very simple answer to this. What's going on? Just a spill. These are all photos, you moron. Well, don't you get it, Slim? The treasure was the journey. I'm not going back to prison for breaking and entering and having a journey. Okay. Hey, man. Hey. I'm sorry, man. Let's just get out of here. We've caused enough trouble. Wait, so Joe, why are we filming in front of the TV truck? I thought this was an ice cream truck. I've been waiting on a Chaco Taco for an hour. Joe, a Chaco Taco? The Taco truck's down the street, man. Were you dropped as a baby? Make sure to check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm Joe Basie. And I'm Sam Spear. And, and thanks, thanks for staying, staying up late at State. state.
now we're just vibing, man. Oh, Trump yeah. vibes. Joe, would you ever drive a diesel, man? No. 